Can we talk about some nice guys wearing bad helmets last night? Mm-hmm. Who you didn't treat like nice guys the last time they were in Baltimore. You did not show them that great Baltimore hospitality. Uh, you didn't. It wasn't a be more thing the last time they were in town. You didn't get get them any crab cakes. You didn't no charm show in this city, that, baby. No, no charm. That warmth that Baltimore is known for. <laughs> you called the Detroit Lions all out of their name. The last time they were in Baltimore, they lost by 32 points, but not last night. Monday Night Football, the Detroit Lions reestablished themselves. They're back to six and two. One of the best teams in the National Football League. And here's their coach after the game. Well, well, lots of things after the game. Dan Campbell after the game, and then we got to hear from Devontae Adams and Josh McDaniels post game two. Oh, okay, so. Okay, so listen, right, I'm going to sit here. And, yeah. I'm going to sit here and say this, Holly. Um, I, you know, the Lions. I, I said what I said last week. I got that out of my system. But ultimately, uh, it is what it is, and the Lions are, you know, a good team. They are a very good team. The the Raiders are not a good team. Okay, um, <laughs> and in that regard, look, look, this Jimmy Garoppolo hire just it it head scratches. Every time you look at it, it feels like, well, what was the point of letting Derek Carr go if y'all were going to look like this with Jimmy Garoppolo? I, it really does. It, I just don't understand, right? But ultimately, the I'm not going to sit here and say that the reason why the Lions won is because the Raiders j- or lost. It's the Raiders' fault. But ultimately, like, what are you doing with Devontae Adams? You're doing nothing with Devontae Adams, a guy that you traded for, the guy that was one of the best wide receivers in the league. You're not doing anything with. He had one reception for 11 yards Holly one I started looking at his statistics he hasn't done anything he had seven receptions for 57 yards the week before against the Bears he had two receptions for 29 yards against the Patriots two weeks ago I had to scroll to find out where his last touchdown was and you know what it was week three the man has had three touchdowns and the last one that he had was week three. So yes, the lions are a good football team, but the Raiders are just badly coached. They don't have a good quarterback. They don't have a good offensive line. I'm going to go ahead and give it to them because the schedule is what it is. But ultimately, that's right. The the schedule is what it is, but the Raiders, the Raiders stink dog. Like the Raiders. Okay. Sure. Sure. And look, when you play, when you play bad teams, that's the Cowboys. We just saw about the Cardinals. Hey, you play bad right. teams, you got to beat them. You got to yes. beat them. To, and, and, the, and the Cardinals beat the Cowboys. So you're going to come across a lot of bad teams. You just take care of them and you keep on moving. That's their business. Let them be dysfunctional. We got bigger things to think about. Here's Dan Campbell and others post game last night. Work was that we put in this week was about the whole focus was about getting back to what we do and and that was the most important thing and that really showed through today was it perfect it wasn't perfect but ultimately we got what I wanted to get out of it and you come away with a win um, I thought our defense played outstanding outstanding man you play defense like that you can beat anybody I don't know what to say at this moment I, I truly don't I wish I had the the words to you know to say something that's not going to get blown up in the media and, and taken out of context. So I'm gonna just uh, I truly I just don't know. What are you feeling right now? Can you uh, elaborate on anything going through your mind? Frustration, but I mean that's that kind of goes without saying. Do you have any ideas or anything you think that could, could spark the offense going forward? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That ain't my job. We have to be able to produce more points in order to win games in this league. And right now we're not doing that. And so uh, that's obviously my responsibility. And we'll take a look at everything we're doing, uh, everybody that's doing it, you know, and try to figure out if there's a better way. Maybe change that quarterback. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay, uh, look, look, Rita, I already said the, the Lions, the official team of brother from another, I'm not backing down. Okay, we six and two. I'm feeling pretty good after eight games. All right. It's not like it's not like I said the Patriots are the official team of brother from another at two and six. We got six and two. I feel pretty good 
about where we are as a team. I'm wearing my Lions blue today. I, I, I ain't touching those helmets. Those helmets are uh, the ugliest things I've ever seen. I hate those. I hate, 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 hate those helmets. Oh, that's a bad helmet, but that's our team. So I already said what I had to say about the Detroit Lions. Now, let me just be clear about Josh McDaniels. I've known Josh McDaniel for 20 years. No, 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 mm -hmm. 21 years. Uh, yeah, hey, you no, know, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll do the Malcolm X line. 22 years, Red. 22 <laughs> years. <laughs> no, I've known him for a long time. No, seriously, it's, about, it's been over 20 years. And I, I you know, he's a homeboy. He's a, he's a Buckeye, just like I am. He grew up in Canton. I grew up in Akron. You know, we got a lot in common. Spend a lot of time. I saw him uh, come up through the ranks with the Patriots. Spent a lot of time with him. He's been very generous with his time. I've learned a lot of football from Josh McDaniels. But Josh, oh man. You got to know when the room has turned on you. The room has turned on you. Now the owner, you still got the owner. I think you're in pretty good shape because you got Mark Davis. But when you go the next time you see those men in that locker room, it might be a misunderstanding. <laughs> right, Devontae Adams, Devontae Adams said everything by not saying anything. Yep. And Josh, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs Josh Jacobs said everything. They're like, your two best offensive players. The guy who led the league in rushing last year. The guy who led the league in receiving. Devontae Adams. But uh, Rita, I was having a conversation with Michael Smith yesterday about the top five receivers in football. Just yesterday. And Devontae Adams' name did not come up. Nope. We mentioned it. We said, oh, we probably should, but we can't. And I think this frustration it goes to what his reputation is. His reputation is being affected. He's got terrible quarterback play. He went to Vegas to play with his college buddy, Derek Carr. Yeah. Josh McDaniels accelerated his own clock by releasing Carr three quarters, three quarters through his first year with them. And now we've seen, we've seen a uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. We've seen Brian Hoyer briefly. We've seen some guys who Devontae Adams looks at and says, come on, come on. I can do a lot. I can work with a lot, but don't do this to me. Oh, Josh, Josh McDaniels is in trouble in his locker room. Yes, he is. And um, I feel like this is not the first time that that's happened because Holly, remember, he was the coach of the Denver Broncos at one point in time. I ain't forget. And I remember how that went down when he traded Jay Cutler for some snacks and Brandon Marshall, the situations with that going on. So this has been his reputation as far as I'm concerned. And I feel like Mark Davis is keeping him probably because he can't afford to not keep him if he releases him uh -huh. and has to hire somebody else. He probably ain't got no money to be hiring somebody else and still have to face Josh McDaniels because that's just where, where we are at this point. But ultimately, this is a mess. The ownership is a mess. Coaching is a mess. Allegedly, Josh McDaniels wanted to trade Josh Jacobs and Mark Davis says apparently he loves Josh Jacobs, but you didn't give him a fifth year option, which he was the leading rusher last year. You did give him a one year deal, but it is only a one year deal. So if you love someone so much, I don't understand why you're only going to give them a one year deal. Furthermore, I don't understand why you wouldn't trade a guy for capital draft capital. If you have no intention on signing them long term, this organization is 325 three Eastern right now. It's 325 Eastern, so there's still time. Okay, <laughs> yes, still and time. you're right. You got, it is still time. Got 35 but as of right minutes. now, it hasn't happened, and that's what I'm going to say about that. This organization is a mess. They need a whole new shellacking of people that knows that can do the fundamentals, that can do the inside work, and that can coach, that can get these guys motivated. Because as of right now, they don't have that, and they don't know how to pick guys, good, good players, and free agency. So it's just... Mm. It's just a firestorm at this point. If I'm the Raiders, I'm going to try to get rid of whoever I can of value now and just start over because this team is not good. They are not a good football team, and that's just what it boils down to. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.